Hi, Kevin 83. I'm an admin in the Taskbot team, and I do a lot of work on Pokemon speedrun passing. Yes, absolutely, the absolute Taskbot of our team. So that's awesome. Uh, we'll kind of just get started, and we can kind of explain a little bit about what happens when fun gets going. There's not too much in the beginning, so I'm going to start in Per letter, so the uh, lower that we nickname ourselves uh, in terms of letters, the faster we get to go. So we're gonna be doing that as with our character as well as our um, as a good amount of our Pokemon. Well. Yeah, con conception. It sounds like it's so loud that they can't even hear us. So we'll have to kind of start over the commentary. No problem. I ducked it quite a bit. Just needed to get here, so I have a, an input okay. break. There we go. Cool. Let me know if that sounds better. Hey, sorry, you're, you're literally gonna have to cut the game audio in like half. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, cu I cut it even more, so let's see if that's good. Okay, great. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Let me know. If, let me know if we're good here. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Good. All right. Good. <laughs> so we've got Conception on uh, the game right now. He's playing Pokemon Red, and I uh, mentioned I'm Ty Kevin eighty three. I'm an admin over in the Taskbot team. And I do work on Pokemon testing, especially in Gen 1. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so sorry about the uh, audio issues there. I didn't know my audio was bumped up so, so high. Um, but yeah, my name is Conception2. I'm running this game. This is any percent glitch, obviously. Um, so uh, as I mentioned near the beginning, but you probably didn't hear because the audio was so blown out. Uh, what we got going on at the beginning was that we nickname ourselves and our rival A. Um, and that is because... Um, Text, even set to the fastest setting, moves at about one frame per letter. Um, so if we nickname ourselves as well as some of our Pokemon with one letter, um, that's obviously going to save us frames over the run. So that as much. Then obviously we, we pick Squirtle. That's going to be our fastest option as well here. Uh, obviously, if you've played this game before, as I'm sure a lot of you have, our first uh, gym battle is going to be Brock. Um, Squirtle is going to give us bubble at, by level eight, uh, so it's going to be fastest uh, amount of time we can get to a move to defeat Rock Pokemon. Um, so that is the choice for Squirtle. The Squirtle is not going to be the Pokemon running with the majority. Yeah. Uh, ooh, some great crits there. Sometimes those help get through growls. Yeah, yeah, not terrible, you know, especially in a marathon setting. I'll take that rival fight. We did get a tackle miss there, I believe. Um, I was still trying to mess with my settings a little bit, but uh, uh, that's all right. We got through it still relatively with uh, with ease. I also did take a potion from our PC in our bedroom right at the beginning of the run, and that it was just purely for safety in that fight alone. Uh, there is about roughly, I think it's about 10% chance that you can die uh, to that fight, which we need in for the RNG aspect. I mean, for the yeah. experience aspect, rather. Um, so we take that potion just for safety, but I didn't need to. Yeah, but that's it's always a really complicated decision to take that in an RTA run, because usually when you're doing runs outside of a marathon, you don't get it, and then your items are in a different order because you go buy Pokeballs. Hmm. Exactly. So then you end up needing to make different strategy when you go to do your Nidoran manipulation and catch... A Nidoran because you've got your items in a different order than usual. Yep, that's absolutely true. And you'll what well, you'll see when we get there. Actually, um, it, instead of doing different inputs for the uh, RNG manipulation, I'll just swap the items just to make it easier for my own brain, so I don't have to learn two different inputs. Yeah, yeah, I've I've done that pretty pretty often myself. Yeah. I should have killed that. I don't know why. That's all right. I was thinking about RNG manipulation, but that's all right. We do need to kill one um, Pokemon here on the route. Uh, uh, Rattata is a great option, so I don't know why I chose to run from that. That's all right, though. Um, uh, the other options we can get are obviously Pidgeys, which are a little bit slower. Um, they only know Gust, uh, whereas a Rattata knows uh, Tackle as well as Tail Whip. So obviously, get some Tail Whips, it'll save us a little bit on our health. 
So it would have been nice to have killed that rat if I had not just been, uh, you know, kind of glossing over it, but that's all right. We can find something. Okay, so apparently wherever you adjusted it to the first time was perfect. Okay, so go yeah, it's up a, a bit little bit too more. low now. Okay, yeah. all right. Let's find this balance. Let's find this balance. Luckily, we don't have voice lines to go through or anything, so we're not missing anything. Yeah, sorry about that. That's well, right. well, that that balance. I got a quick donation here from Alex, who says, "Great job." Uh, I guess this was to uh, uh, Doctor Evil. Uh, great job on the run, despite all the rehydrated moments. Thank you so much, Alex. And again, if anyone else wants to donate uh, to support a great cause for veteran mental health being supported through gaming, go ahead and do Command Charity in the chat, and you can find out all about that. Thanks so much, and enjoy the run. Yeah. So we actually got really good RNG. Had I chosen to defeat that Rotata, we actually would be in great shape there. Um, but for some reason, I, I ran from it. Uh, but we did not face a lot of encounters on Route uh, 1 there, which is really, really good. Um, now we're going to get set up to do our Nidoran manipulation, so I'm going to be a little quiet here while I just fo at... Uh, actually, I got items. Yeah, Conception I would have preferred to kill one encounter, but now he will be needing to get experience later. And that's just so that Squirtle will get to the correct levels to get a water move bubble before Brock. Good news from the uh, manipulation. Yep, we always love to see that, especially in a marathon. It's the only manipulation that is crucial to the run. Uh, we do a few other RNG manipulations here uh, in the run, but mostly that is just to save time. Um, if they fail or, you know, we even if I chose not to do them, which I'm, I'm going to, but if I chose not to do them, it would just be slower as opposed to crucial. But that one is absolutely crucial. What we end up setting up there um, is I you you probably noticed I saved and I reset um, and during that reset I'm actually holding specific inputs uh, directly on the uh, you know loading screens as well as you know the idle screen and things like that. Uh, that's too bad. I was well, I'm still gonna why not. Um, and that is basically setting up at uh, the R perfect RNG seed that we are looking for. So what what we do there is we not only set it up to catch a Nidoran specifically. Uh, and, you know, at level four and all that, but it's actually a Nidoran with the most ideal stats that we could get uh, for, you know, in respect to how much time it takes to get it. Um, so it's basically what we call, you know, a god Nidoran. Um, excellent stats all the way around, almost perfect, I think, besides defense, uh, which is just slightly um, below perfect. Uh, besides speed, speed, I believe. Okay, it's, speed. Yeah. yeah, I knew it was the defense or speed. I couldn't remember what mm -hmm. we got there. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. just... I decided to walk through that patch of grass before we entered Viridian Forest here for a couple reasons. One, I, I still do need an encounter, and I took a little bit of a risk fighting that Weedle because I could have got poisoned, but it was fine. We didn't even get attacked, which was great. Um, <laughs> yeah. The second reason why I chose to is that I could have encountered a bird Pokemon there, um, in which I need to do catch. I do need to catch a bird Pokemon before uh, before long because that is going to be a Pokemon that we're going to live with. Um, so if I had gotten a bird Pokemon there, I would have caught it. Um, if I had gotten anything else, I would have just defeated it, which is exactly what I did. So, no harm, no foul. We still at least got our defeat going. But we, after, will we, after we complete this Weedle fight here, we are going to be level 8. Mm hmm Yep, in, uh, the RTA run, they can do this, uh, getting any encounter in, in Weedle. But in the tasks, we have to get the highest level Pikachu, the one in a hundred in the forest, so that we can be an even higher level when we fight Onyx. Yep, exactly. Just some cool nuances with the experience routing. Yeah, which and is like in R Go ahead. In RTA, they'll do the level four Nidoran, and in tasks, we do the level three Nidoran, because otherwise Nido gets too much experience. And in Gen 1, you have to get exactly to a level in order to get the uh, like move learning from that fight. Yep. So like if you were to level up past level eight and hit level nine or ten as Nidoran, you would never learn horn attack and you wouldn't be able to 
fight basically anything. <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. Like, I I have seen some people who are learning the run, for example, if they struggle to get through Brox's, Brox, Onyx, and their portal feints, they try to take it out with the Nidoran, and they're like, oh, awesome, I can keep going. But that is not quite the case, because you're going to overlevel your... Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, that fight didn't go particularly well. Ideally, what we like to see there is we tail whip twice, and then we uh, tackle four times in order to defeat that Weedle. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple things happened there. One, I got poisoned, uh, which happens often, which is why we pick up the antidote before. Um, two, I actually I got a crit, which actually hurt my chances. So, I tail whip twice in order to uh, weaken the defense of the Weedle. Um, it, however, when you do a crit on a Pokemon, it ignores all status buffs, um, so it actually ignores the double tail up I got and just crits on my base damage. So it actually, and which actually is less uh, than if I had tail whip twice. So um, that crit actually made it turn into a five tackle uh, fight instead of a four. So a little bit slow. Yeah, that's all right. Even worse than a useless crit because the crits in Gen One can do as little as only fifty percent more damage when your uh, your tail whips are super useful um and then you'll notice immediately post fight what i did was obviously i healed up my squirtle which is going to be useful right that was more for safety i probably yeah. could have kept it at that level of health anyway it was pretty high um yeah and i, I liked that getting the the po the early mart for all the extra potions that's a really good play when you're uh, low on potions out of the forest yeah exactly um obviously healed off my poison as well and then we swapped nidoran to the front so we can do some basic you know uh, swap leveling here. So we have Nidoran out front for the very beginning of the fight, swap to Squirtle immediately, so Nidoran can get pretty pretty standards. Yeah, you, you very rarely see swap training, but there's this really unique situation here which we already discussed with the possibility of leveling too much and you need to swap train on, on Brock. Well, even better that it failed. That's... Oh yeah. Of that. The oh, but it failed text is one of the best things you can possibly get in the speed run. For a turn. Oh, did you just yeah. Gen yep. one? Mi oh, so the early into the run. So early into the run too. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Luckily, it didn't and hurt you our got chances. But more screech fails and tackle non crits. That's <laughs> that is a hilarious fight. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> Rather unconventional to say the least. Uh, that fight. So let's talk about Gen 1 misses a little bit. So yeah, um, yeah, we should probably do that. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a unique thing that happens in this game. So there are moves that are 100% accurate, Bubble being one of them. Lots of moves are 100% accurate, in fact. Um, however, this game has a factor that there is a 1 in 256 chance that your 100% accurate move will miss for no reason at all. Um, and that is just a, a function of the game for some reason. And you just saw it there. Um, nothing impeded my bubble's accuracy. I wasn't sand attacked or anything like that. Um, however, my bubble missed, and it, that was just a 1 in 256 chance for that to happen. Uh, marathon luck abound. Yes. Um, you'll notice I right after I defeated Brock there as well, and we exited the gym, I went into my menu, and I actually went into my options. What that does is I turned off our... Uh, Battle from shift to set, I believe that's what it is. I haven't looked at it in so long. Um, which basically, uh, if you've played Pokemon games before, you'll know after you defeat something, it'll ask if you, you know, you know, this is what Pokemon they're going to put out next. Would you like to, uh, you know, change Pokemon? I turned that option off because Nidoran is just going to be in the front for pretty much the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. So uh, that we just make it so we can save all those texts. Xbox. Yeah, programmers were no well. No, there's three main problems in programming. Null pointer exceptions and off by one errors. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can see, yep, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of tanking a little bit here. Um, oddly enough, so um, this is a bug catcher. He's got uh, Caterpie, Weedle, Caterpie. Um, we get to talk a little bit here about something called badge boost. Um, so string shot is lowering our speed, which is fine. Um, not a big deal, really. We actually want to get lowered by one because that's going to uh, constitute a badge boost. That's actually going to increase our damage output. Um, and that is just from after defeating Brock. Uh, when you uh, get a badge, you get a boost uh, to a particular stat based on yep. 
Um, so now that uh, my speed was lower, then I had a boost to my abilities there. It actually helps our damage. Uh, you probably could explain that better, but <laughs> I, uh, that, that's mm -hmm. basically what's happening. Yeah, you, I think you basically nailed it. It's just the any time one of your stats is changed, even your accuracy. Now, this is like a little bit of a, a complex situation. If you use an X accuracy, it doesn't change your, your accuracy stat. It removes the concept of accuracy from your Pokemon for the, for the duration of that battle. If you have your accuracy or like evasion stages modified though, then that changes things and that will give you a badge boost. Unlike, like, so like if you use an x -Act, it doesn't give you the badge boost bug. Yep, exactly. And we, we will be dealing a lot with accuracy later on in the run, uh, for sure. Of course. So this uh, Shorts Kid is a little infamous here. Uh, we call him Shorts Kid because he mentions he likes shorts or he's very yada yada. Uh, he's got two Pokemon, which are Rattata and then Ekans. The move that you don't want to see is the move that I saw first, which is Trap. Um, trap is fine. It's not going to kill us necessarily. We got it twice, of course. Um, but it's really slow. So in Gen 1, when you're wrapped, you cannot do anything. Uh, you have to wait until the wrap cycle is over, which could last between two and five turns. Um, so it's just, it just immobilizes you. In, in later Gens, you're able to attack through wraps. Um, but you cannot in this gen, and it just slows us up if we get, you know, wrapped, which I got twice, so marathon luck indeed. Yeah, I like to call that guy Eminem because he's the rap god. <laughs> the rap god. <laughs> Alright, I got a new name for him. You know, Shorts Kid is gone, Eminem it is. Well, the, the he, he can still be Shorts Kid, but his Ekans is, is Eminem. There you go, perfect. I love it. All right, so this trainer is relatively uneventful. It is unfortunate that we got string shotted twice here. We are going to be slower than the, which is not at all dangerous, but it spams Harden. Um, if we had gotten to go first, we could have gotten attack off before it increased its defense. So now we will likely have to take an extra turn here in order to yeah. get its health down, uh, unless we get a crit, of course. So we'll see yeah. if that happens. And it's not as punishing as it could be because of the way that the badge boosts are helping us. So even though we got slowed by the string shot, we did get the benefit of the badge boost bug, making our attack stat higher. Got the classic useless crit there at the end, which was... And, well, that crit is still kind of useless. If it had taken the Caterpie out, then that'd have been great. But, you know, sure is the two shot, I guess. I think it was insured with all the times I was about it anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the Metapod is faster than us too, so same issue. It spams Harden. Would have liked to have gotten an attack off before that, but you know, just slows yeah. us down a little. Yeah, we level up before this last Metapod, so all of our badge boosts get cleared, and now it's just straight up worse to be slow. All right, one more trainer to deal with on Route 3 here. Another bug catcher. I'm hopeful we get a crit here uh, so I can save some EP of a uh, horn attack because uh, I'm running a little low, so we'll have to see. What... So which Mount Moon manipulation are you going to be doing? Are you going to start inside Moon or are you going to start from the uh, Route 3 grass? I do enter Moon, so uh, okay. I'll, I'll enter Moon and dip there. Yeah, I honestly use the same one myself. Yeah, that's the one I learned first, and I know, yeah, a lot of, you know, especially the top runners will use the, uh, a different manipulation that will start shortly after I defeat the Um, but I, that was the one I learned first, and I just have not wanted to learn the second one yet. Um, and it's, you know, there's a negligible difference between, in the route that I run currently. Um, so, it's worth well, that it. Hurt again. Yeah, that helped. That helped, for sure. Feel smart, man. That's uh, the effect where when any of our stats get changed. So, instance, if we get string shot and slowed, or if we get leered and our defense goes down, then any badges we've already gotten, like the attack boost badge from Brock, get multiplied again. So they give us a 9 eighths boost to our attack by default, but then there's a bug and causes us to get another 9 eighths attack. All right, so I mentioned before we need to catch a bird, which is exactly why I kind of dive in this grass here, not to mention there's a trainer we're going to avoid here. 
Um, I got my encounter literally on the first tiles, which is a little scary because that means I have to walk through a lot more grass to get around, but I got through it without an encounter, which is... Um, but we got our bird, we got our Spira, which is actually the better choice for a marathon run in case things go really south. Um, I have an option to change that bird out for another bird that can learn cut later on if things... Ducks! Yeah, hopefully we don't have to see that. You never know. All right, and then I'm gonna focus big time on this minute. We're gonna save here. Accidentally moved, messed up my movement a little bit there, um, so I'm actually just going to back up here. Just it's it's gonna waste a little time because I have to reset, but I would rather just ensure that I get the Paris since we're right here anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this shows the value of knowing backup strategies for a lot of these things because even though the manipulations are really powerful, it is pretty uh, difficult to hit them every single time you do a run. this one a little bit differently just a just a slight variation of what most people do for that backup. Yeah, so a lot a lot actually happened there. <laughs> yeah. That um, Paris is super useful because it can learn dig and cut. And it also... Uh, I guess it's kind of not perfect because it does have a bit of a long cry. But it can just it can learn so many of those utility moves that we get Paris over anything else. Yep, exactly. Um, so obviously, if you're a little bit confused as to what you saw as I'm walking through Mount Moon and you're not seeing any Zubats, which is pretty, uh, you know, pretty normal. Um, what happened uh, was similar to what we did for the Nidoran earlier, of course. Um, so what, similar to what we did for the Nidoran earlier is I, oh my gosh, two tackle miss. Um, I manipulated um, the RNG to um, make it so that I am walking in a, a specific path that I'm not hitting encounters. I'm also pressing A on very specific frames as well. Um, so that, you know, that helps buffer encounters as well. So a little, little bit confusing as to what's going on there. I'm actually... Yeah. Yeah, the, the easiest way really to explain it is just that when you have an old game console like this, it acts the same way every single time you turn on the console, as long as you do the same inputs. And there's these, like Conception mentioned, there's these things called buffers, where there's huge windows where we can press a button and the same thing will end up happening on the console. We just have these scripted uh, manipulations found where 
we know you press these buttons in the same sequence and you will always get no encounters. Yep. Um, and then I messed up my movement by one tile at the end of the very first manipulation that I was doing. Uh, which you can actually extend it entirely and do it all the way to where I ended and caught that Paris without having to reset. But I, uh, I accidentally, I fat thumbed my uh, arrow key and moved a little bit farther than I wanted to. Um, so that's why I saved and did a backup manipulation just to ensure mm -hmm. that I was going to hit. Um, I got very unlucky in that fight, unfortunately, and ended up dying, which is exactly why I saved here in the first place. Um, hopefully yeah. we get a little bit better uh, shot. I also set up poorly on the uh, Rattata anyway, so I'm kind of glad to get a better shot at yeah and we we plan for this fight going poorly so uh yeah, yeah that, that not the end of the world yeah that is baked into the estimate for sure because <laughs> you get it's very easy to die on this fight especially if you get things like supersonic all the time mm -hmm. yeah there's even a, a couple different routes now that fight an extra encounter and a trainer on route three i believe <laughs> so that they don't have to fight this trainer in races Yep, and then uh, yeah, you you'll you'll encounter this trainer at a higher level, which obviously guarantees a bit more for you. I have not learned that path yet, um, so I am uh, doing it the old-fashioned way. But we got through it the second time. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, we this one's like pretty similarly fast. It just has that extra variance with the uh, fight being kind of risky. Of course, we had an encounter that uh, right before I'm gonna menu, but okay. All right, so we're gonna do an extended menu here. We're going to. Use the rare candy that we picked up uh, to evolve our Nidoran into Nidorino. Then we're going to teach that Nidorino water gun. Weird that it can learn it, but that you know, that's Gen 1 for you. Then we're going to use a Moonstone to evolve Nidorino into Nido King. Then we're going to teach Nido King. Uh, oops. I, uh, then we're going to teach Nido King uh, Mega Punch. Um, so qu quite a lot going on here. Yeah. And that just make, gives us like the most powerful Pokemon we could possibly have at this point in the game. Nido King. Uh, tier three evolution with level, level only level sixteen. We're only twenty five minutes into the game. It's just gonna destroy everything else we can be fighting. Exactly. Not to mention we use it. Uh, we use it exactly the same way in tasks, and it does the same thing for us. We just don't need to quite rush getting the King quite as quickly because. Uh, we don't fight barely any extra trainers in tasks. In, in, the, in the RTA run, they'll get all these extra trainers in early so that they can hit level 16 a bit sooner and get that extra power of the king as soon as possible. Exactly. Um, so, yep, well, now we got our tier 3, you know, super powerful um, Nido King. We're going to be using Mega Punch quite a bit in this part of the run. Now, Mega Punch is a very interesting move. Um, it is... A very powerful move, which is exactly why we pick it up, but it is a move that is not 100% accurate. I believe it is 85% accurate, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, Slightly less than that if you want to get super technical. Oh, well, yeah, with your Gen 1 misses. Yeah, so it's probably like an 84.6 something. Yeah, and, and there's some rounding with 8-bit math, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that that puts us in a few you know interesting positions if we continuously miss you know Mega Punches. Luckily, all of them landed there, which is great. Um, so we got through that. Um, but yeah, we, we're going to use it quite a bit for the next few badges at least. Um, and, uh, it can yield some interesting results, we'll put it that way. Uh, we pick up Helix Fossil simply because it's the quickest to do. Um, and, uh, and, you know, as opposed to making the, uh, NPC walk extra tiles to go around us and have him pick Helix. Um, so... Helix because it's fastest and we get out of Mount Moon as fast as we can. And we are free. So that was the whole Mount Moon thing. That is two of three RNG manipulations that I'm going to do. Run. So first being Nidoran, then uh, now we got Mount Moon out of the way. And we're going to do another one in just a... got some time. All right, so this is our first Pokemon Center we've used in the run, by the way. Um, I, be I believe that's the case. Um, and we use it, obviously, not only to heal up our Pokemon, but it's going to be a nice base for us later on for uh, us using Dig. That's it. 
Um, but if you want to talk a little bit about instant tech, that would be great. Still with me? Are we here? Everything good? Yep, I'm oh, back. Okay, sorry. I threw to you. I didn't know you left. <laughs> I said if you wanted no, to sorry, talk I, uh, <laughs> I had to mute a second because I just got a new dog named Jerry, and he is a very, very big fan of people coming to the door. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, awesome. Mm -hmm. We love dogs. I have a dog of my own. His name is Jabba. Uh, oh, he's in cool. the other room with my fiance. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, if you want to talk a little bit about instant text, uh, while I hope oh, this dude, time I goes well. To. Yeah. So basically what happens is when you go into menus in the game, the game likes to say, hey, you're going into a menu. I don't want to slowly print all the text in this giant menu. I'm going to set a, a variable to zero for how much to delay between each character printing. And in one menu in the game, when it does that, it sets it to zero and then never sets it back to one after leaving the menu if you close the, the bike shop with B. So you just end up with this like carried out instant text effect. And uh, you can retain it as long as you never go into one of the menus that would do that same thing where it sets the variable to zero and one again. So you can never use any items while you're in this instant text state. You're just stuck YOLOing until you uh, until you get to the point where you would lose it anyway. Like if you learn Thrash, there's that yes, no text box, and that does the thing with this in instant text variable change. Um, or when you go into Bill's house and, and have that whole conversation with Bill. So uh, you, you go down and talk to the bike shop owner because that's the one place where there's this bug where it doesn't set the variable back, and now you have instant printing text for forever yep um which so that it makes it very interesting so obviously we're on we're on nugget bridge here now um just passing our uh our second rival fight there um so you can obviously just see the text is just moving super fast um that rival fight one could go poorly and it almost did but i actually got really lucky um the way it could go poorly is if uh the pidgeotto that our rival um leads with uh, use a sand attack which lowers our accuracy um and it lowers it by a third i believe um that's the number but um yep. uh, basically so making our 100 percent accurate moves down to 67 and, and things of that nature um so you know hitting these moves if we continuously are missing moves uh you, we might have to heal for example to stay alive or something like that which would make us lose instant text because we can't use any items um uh, or going to any um yeah have we talked about red bar yet we have not we have not no it's a great opportunity to do that because when you're on this bridge section with red bar, you also, so with instant text, you also usually want to be in something called red bar. Red bar is when your HP is below 10 out of 48 on the like, so the pixels of the HP bar are, there's like 48 pixels long. And if you're below like 10 of those pixels, then it'll start blinking and having this alarm sound. The alarm sound, makes it so that none of the other sounds load and it makes the game run way faster. So you really want to be in that red bar state as much as possible, but it's also dangerous. So you're when you're doing uh, especially like regular runs outside of a marathon setting, this is often the most dangerous section of the run because you're wanting to be in low health below like 20% and with this instant text where you can never heal. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of runs, especially at the top level, will die, can die here, I should say, uh, because they want to make it as optimized as possible. Obviously, in a marathon setting, if I don't get red bar, whatever, I'll, I'll take the time loss as long as I'm still alive. That's all I really care about at this point. So, exactly. Uh, um, so we'll, we'll, you, you we'll see what we get. Force red bar. Yeah. Which I definitely won't because my health is really high, actually, right now. Um, I'm used to it being lower in regular runs. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly fine. It's very safe. So we take we like safety. Safety is good. Yeah, and now, now you have safe instant text. Yeah, which means that I could keep instant text for pretty much this, uh, the Nugget Bridge and then the route that we're going into above. Well, pretty much the whole really is going to eat to horn attack here, but I'm going to to save some uh, PP on Mega Punches potentially, so I might be able to skip the center if my help. Which we would do in a... Uh, 
in a non non marathon setting. Anyway, I typically will take the Pokemon in a marathon setting. Safer, but I might not have to. Depending on how lucky we get. Kai Hale, uh, to give an example of that, when we do the tasks, the task of, of Red is an, an hour and 29 minutes, and the fastest human run is an hour and 45 minutes. So having Red Bar perfectly through the whole run saves like 5 to 10 minutes out of that 16 minute difference. And there's so many places you can get it too. Even at a human level, um, there's a lot of places that you, we want to use red bar uh, as much as we can. Obviously, RNG is factor into the heavily, but um, I'm sure even I, I've watched the tasks, and you know, there's definitely more opportunity for red bar than even what would be humanly normal, uh, just based on you know all of the favorable RNG programmed into the task. So. so the yeah, the red bar saves a ton of time, like yeah. on the order of several minutes and uh yeah as we said it's when your pokemon's health is below about 20 percent yeah that's the rough mark um yeah you will you will get to see it at some point guaranteed it, hopefully well you'll get to see it sooner rather than later but you will see it at some point you'll, you'll get a sense of Uh, but yeah, right now we're just skating through this um, this route here. There's really not much of uh, you know cause for concern here, especially since health is so high. Um, water gun uh, that we taught earlier is obviously very useful on that Onyx, um, so why we use it. Not to mention upcoming trainer who has to go dudes. So that's kind of what we utilize water gun for. briefly. We're actually going to teach over it uh, pretty soon after this. Um, then, uh, yeah, we just basically skate through everything in hopes that whenever we use uh, Mega Punch, it hits. It's seeming increasingly likely that I'm just going to skip this Pokemon. Pretty good. Yeah, you're in great shape for that. Especially since pretty, we've gotten pretty fortunate luck with the Mega Punches. Um... For example, we mentioned before that the Mega Punch is 85% accurate move. On the Rival 2 fight, I got Sand Attack, so my accuracy was lowered. Um, and then I hit three Mega Punches in a row still, so that, that was really good. Is um, there any thought to using the center anyway to make it more likely to hold Red Bar after Misty? Yeah, yeah, that's... so that that's... That's the that's the debate I always have in my head is uh you know if uh, obviously when you use the center your health is completely rejuvenated so you know in a PB attempt we'll actually almost almost never use the center unless something incredible happens or run out of potions or something um I so you'll actually want to go into the Misty fight a little bit weakened typically in a marathon setting I go in full health um however I have enough mega punches I have two mega punches left. Um, um, I have two Mega Punches left, and my health is really high. I would only need to use one potion. Um, so I think it's where I'm, I'm going to go for not taking the center. I'm going to go for it. Um, it could really cool. go either way here. Um, I'm going to be four health off of full, so it's really not dangerous. Yeah, um, and that way you could at least do the center after Misty. If I need And to. still get your instant text back. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this and is then the Red, you you centered right away when you entered the town too, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. So you already have your dig waypoint set for when you go to uh, Vermilion and need to dig back. Exactly. Yep. So the waypoint is set. So we already have it set up there. The only time, the only reason why I center um, in marathon type runs there to here typically is to save potions for one, um, and just to make it so I'm full health anyway, or not having to use. But, um, and, and, and also if my uh, Mega Punches go poorly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't have enough left. Would we have time for a couple quick donations? Yeah, go for it. Sweet. So first off, we have $20 from Anonymous that says, May R and Jesus bless you, Conception, and all other runners this marathon. Good luck. Thank you so much. And then we have a 
And then we have a $50 donation from Romeo saying, great effort, keep going. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, we are approaching the $200 mark, which is great. If anyone else wants to donate, you can go ahead and do uh, command charity in the chat to find out all about Stack Up and the great uh, cause that we are supporting. So thanks so much and keep enjoying the run. Yeah, in that vein as well, one thing that I always love doing that's pretty popular with, with Pokemon runs in Marathon Center is if you ever want to like shout out your favorite Pokemon in your donation comments or uh, anything like that, uh, feel free to donate uh, the money. Sometimes people even donate towards like the Pokedex number, which is interesting. So if you want to go ahead and do that, I would love to hear what your favorite Pokemon are. Um, obviously, it's for a great cause, too. All right, so we, um, you, kind of weird. We're able to use escape rope out of Bill's house there. Um, just, j just cause you can, um, <laughs> for lack of a better explanation, you're just able to, so we do. Um, and that gets us back to the Pokemon Center rather quickly. Obviously, um, we get instant text again, uh, because we lost instant text due to me having to learn thrash. Um, because yeah. you have to answer yes or no to move it, which is technically a menu. So I, uh, instant text was gone at that point. So we pick it up again, and then we go fight that dig trainer mainly to get some more experience for Misty. We want to be a level 25 by the time we get to her army. Um, and uh, we now also have the dig TM. That's good. That'll be useful. Yeah, 25 with our perfect Nitto King makes it easy for us to outspeed Starmie. Now it I, makes the fight quite a bit safer with that outspeed. Yeah, especially since my health is high. Well, um, now I have the very fortunate luck that I get X defend more than anybody I've ever seen um, in this game, which uh, makes is like one thing that can make the fight complicated. Um, but it's still pretty safe because you could just swap out and get instant X again, especially in a marathon setting. It just wastes a little time. Um, Bubble Beam is the real scary one. <coughs> we didn't get X defend, which is good. Water Gun is perfect. Water Gun is exactly what you want. Water gun is amazing. So pretty textbook Misty um, that went on. I was a little nervous that the trainer we fought before Misty was a Goldeen, uh, and it has Supersonic, which it used. Luckily, it missed. Good, uh, but that's like the one thing I can make it. You know that that fight a little bit weird, worrisome. Uh, that Goldeen also knows things like Peck and Tail Whip as well, so it could have used any other move. Um, or I could have crit it and killed it in one shot, you know, all kinds of Supersonic is the one. We got by. Yup. Um, so we are through Misty. That's two badges down. Um, and we still have instant text and I didn't have to get it again. So that's great. Um, one thing you might be at this point too, I always like to, you know, highlight this around this time. You might be wondering, all right, so my estimate, um, is two hours and five minutes. Uh, which is a little generous. That is like a worst case scenario run for me. Um, in addition to that, we are two. We have two badges, and we're like not too far from halfway point in the run. So you're right, what, like, when am I going to get the rest of the badges? Plus, we got to defeat her and all that. Uh, don't worry. Just just hold on to your horses, because uh, you'll see. You'll see how how fast we end up going at the end. Yeah. Once you get horn drill, all the X items, the bicycle. Yeah, it starts to get a bit insane. Got unlucky there uh, just previously. We walked through the grass because it's so much faster than walking around. Um, and, you know, it's not that many tiles of grass, so you hope just to not get an encounter. But, of course, I did. Um, but Yeah, Yeah, and you don't want to see any of the trainers, of course, in that area. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we walk, we walk explicitly around in that second patch of grass to avoid that bug catcher trainer over on the right-hand side. Um, and then we only fight these two trainers because they're blocking our way into room. Um, you are also worth bringing up. So you'll notice that when it comes to trainers, any time that we can, we're going to walk up to them and talk to them if we have to fight them, as opposed to just walking in their line of sight and having them come to us. Um, that is because NPC trainers like that move at about half the speed we do. So if they are walking towards us, not to mention the animation of the little exclamation point that pops above our heads, really slow, um, it is a lot faster to ha avoid that exclamation point animation, but also walk towards them. So that just saves us some, you know, some time over the. Mm -hmm. 
and getting good NPC movement. There's always there's these little NPCs that when you're just walking around will be directly in your path. There's one in Cerulean, uh, two in Cerulean really, um, and then that that lady there um, as I'm walking into Pavilion. And both times that I encountered <laughs> those movement blocking NPCs, they moved for me, which never happens. Oh, uh, they're they are they're blessing GSA with the luck. We've also been blessed with a $50 donation from Ivan Iglesias, who says, very noble purpose, keep going. Thank you so much. That's very, very generous. Yeah, excellent. Also, A plus segue there. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Um, so we are on the SSAN. If you played this game as a kid, you might remember all the exploration you could do, popping in and out of rooms and fighting trainers and getting items, and we're, we're just not going to do all that. I'm sorry. It takes too much time. So uh, we we come directly to the end where we fight our rival, um, and then we talk to the cut master afterwards, and you just, you just go fast. And by directly to the end, you really do mean the end because you have to walk an extra tile to give room for the swag Gary walk to... Be shorter as he leaves the room yep exactly i got a little unfortunate luck there and i could my health was high enough that i could have risked it but you know i why why take the chance um we got sand attacked by pidgeotto um especially dangerous in here uh because um at this point our rival has a uh dabra um so it's if if we had go to went to attack a cadabra it missed and it hits us with a psychic type attack move we're pretty much dunsky so I, I choose not to take the risk there. Um, the good thing about Kadabra is that it's kind of a glass cannon. Very powerful attack, very low defense. So if we can get a powerful physical attack move on it, um, it's going to go down pretty quickly. Uh, however, if I missed, then I probably would have died. So not worth not worth the chance. Yeah, there's a, a great difference here between the red and the yellow routing where in yellow, you actually need to teach Bubble Beam early because there's a Sand Shrew on this Gary fight. But in the red version, they do not have a Sand Shrew on Gary yet. So he does not need to be... Uh, you don't need the Bubble Beam for that fight. And you can just use Thrash for the ending. Yeah, which is really good. The obvious... So what I did to avoid that is I swapped out to uh, another one of my Pokemon. Um, let the Pidgeotto take it out and then swapped back to Middle King. Uh, when you swap out and in when it comes to um, you know buffing or nerf, bu moves that buff or nerf or moves that you know if you're confused for example if you swap out and in those uh, buffs or those status effects are gone. So which is exactly why I did that and I had to make sure that Pidgeotto would kill the Pokemon that I swapped to as well because I don't want to split experience. So if I tried to say swap to Squirtle and tried to kill the Pidgeotto from there uh, would have been a bad idea. Not have as much experience as it. Um, so that's exactly why we do that. Um, that. Of course, swapping is going into a menu. Therefore, I lost instant text. I would have liked to carry it a little bit longer, but the only we would lose it shortly after right now anyway because we're getting ready to go into a shop menu, uh, which we need. Um, we didn't lose a ton of instant text time, uh, but a little bit. Plus, the fight was a little. That's Pokemon speed running for you. All right, so in this route, so there's a lot of variation as to what people do here in terms of this running community. Um, what I'm going to do, and what I think, in my opinion, is most marathon safe, is I'm going to get four repels here, or paralyze heal. Uh, and that is just because there are certain Pokemon coming up that will cause us a problem and potentially paralyze us. Um, so that, those are obvious safety. Um, some you, there's a variance into how much, how many of those, of uh, each of those items that people grab here. Um, that is what I grab personally. And we're going to teach a series of moves to... Uh, well, we're going to teach one move to Nitto King and then two moves to Paris. And we are going to save for our third and final RNG manipulation of the... And the easiest one. By far. By far the easiest one, which is great. Now, another great point about Paris as a uh, friend for all of our moves that we need to dump the cut and dig he didn't need to overwrite any of his existing moves paris uh, starts out with only one or two moves so he has two free slots and you don't have to do any overwriting with the cut and the dig teach 
Excellent, nailed that one as well. Um, by far the easiest one. So like we'd mentioned in previous RNG manipulations, uh, it's not only the inputs that you do as the game is loading up and you're going into your save file, but it's the inputs that you do afterwards as well. But the there's so little movement from where you would go into talking to or just cans in there that uh, we don't have any A presses really besides clicking on the cans. So it's a very, very simple RNG menu. Yeah, it's so short that people have even theorized about trying to manipulate the beginning of this battle through it. And it's it's difficult, but it, there's good reason to look into it. Yeah, especially so. Um, my so my health was high enough. So my health is at 33 right now, uh, which actually caused me to bubble beam the uh, Voltorb there. And hopes uh, the reason why I do that is typically that is a two turn fight when you bubble beam it. I of course got the crit, making it a one turn fight, which is a little bit faster, uh, but it doesn't set us up for what I exactly what I wanted to do which is I was hoping that Voltorb would attack me with a Sonic Boo move, which does a flat 20 damage um, every time. Um, and that would get me into that red bar state potential, or at least closer to that red bar state than uh, we were before. Um, but we crit it, which saves a little time, I guess. Um, and it also makes a little bit, it makes, makes those later fights safer. Uh, the other option, if your health was already low, is that you would thrash the uh, Voltorb, uh, which you would kill in one shot, um, however, you would have to hope to get a four-turn crash, um, or get confused and swap in and out, obviously. Uh, thrash is a move that can last three or four turns in Gen 1. Um, however, after the move is complete, your Pokemon will be confused. Which is exactly why we pro whenever we use it, we do so in, in the ways that will not cause the confusion to happen, ever. Um, if we get a three-turn thrash there, obviously that makes things... We didn't even have to worry about it. Yeah, there's some uh, fun there with being able to dig out of the fan club because they did fix that in yellow and you have to walk all the way over to Diglett's cave to dig back to Cerulean City. But in red, you can just dig straight out of the fan club. Right. Further extending on Nitto King's ridiculous moveset, we're going to teach him Thunderbolt. Um, so if you're keeping track at home, right now our Nitto Kingler has Mega Punch, Thrash, Thunderbolt, and Bubble Beam. Oh. And that's the first of our final move set. Yep. Um, I'm gonna save here, only because my health is fine. I'm not really worried about it, but I did. I do only have one Mega Punch, which, as we talked about, a Mega Punch is not a 100. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to attempt to do is Mega Punch this first Oddish and then Thrash the rest, which makes it... If we miss, you know, we could encounter some weird... Can't, yeah. can't hurt to say. Yeah, Luckily, this fight is notorious as four-turn Thrash fight, because back before we could do full Moon Manipulations and get Mega Punch, we didn't have Mega Punch to do at the beginning of this fight and kill Oddish. And so we would have to go in from the start thrashing. And you still have to do that in yellow, so... This fight is still pretty notorious as the four-turn thrash fight. But now, with being able to do the full moon manipulation, we get Mega Punch in the middle, and then Mega Punch allows us to only need to use thrash for three of the turns of the fight. Precisely. And then because with the got the task guy here, I gotta mention, Please. and task, we don't, have to, we don't have to worry about it. We yeah. just manipulate getting a four-turn thrash. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep, with that, yeah. Pass makes all of these strategies go out the window because it just makes the game do what it, you want it to do more. Uh, which is great. I wish we could, uh, I wish, I sometimes wish the task strategies are human viable, but it would be really, really difficult. Um, all right, so this fight, we bubble beam at uh, the beginning uh, to take out that Caterpie first. And that is purely because there is a chance that this Venonat will not go down in one shot with my Thrash. Uh, it's pretty favorable to do so, but there is a chance. Um, so we didn't we didn't want to have to depend on a four turn thrash. I always take this turn a little slow because I've hit that trainer quite a bunch. Don't need to. Um, and now we're getting ready to go into Rock Tunnel. Very interesting, especially considering that we do not have the flash move, so we do it in the dark. Um, fla 
Flash, so Flash is an HM move. Um, it's not a move that we have um, at the moment. Um, so it makes it so, luckily there's enough in Rock Tunnel that we can see. So we just navigate through Rock Tunnel, basically based on memory. Um, you know, you, you kind of learn how to do it. Um, but yeah, it, even if we wanted to get Flash, which is obviously slow, uh, what we would do is um, we'd have to go and ca we'd have to have 10 Pokemon caught, I think, for one, and then we'd have to go through Diglett Cave and stuff like that. It just is way out of the way. It's not ever worth it um, in terms of going fast. So it's just easier to learn, kind of memorize where trainers are and memorize the path through. Now, people might have thought, wait, why use Thrash if it's not going to kill in one hit? That's going back to the red bar strat. We're trying to get lower and lower in red bar so that we can defeat these... Uh... Oh, we see it again here. Because now that first uh, use did not work out. Ooh, this could be kind of tight yeah, here. I'm going to save before Oddish. I would anyway. Even if my health was at 24 still, I was going to save. Okay. Yeah. So now th this is on a knife edge here, but it's so much faster to have red bar through this section that it's worth forcing its low HP and uh, yeah, we're now we're gonna save and we will hopefully not die. Yeah. This Oddish is the biggest troll. One of the biggest trolls in the run, in my opinion. Uh, there's so much variance as to what can have the hero. Obviously, we're gonna hope that we just take it out, which we didn't. Absorb is not what we want. I think we're dead or do we have one? Nope, we're dead. Okay. Um, I couldn't remember if it was. So that's why our health is a little bit precarious there. Um, but one, we could just take it out and thrash there. It is a range. Um, or obviously if we crit, that makes um, in the But basically the hope is that we kill it. However, there plenty of times we're not going to kill it. Um, but even if we don't kill it, there are options that will still keep us remotely safe. One, if it uses poison powder, uh, it won't work because we can't be poisoned uh, as a poison. Uh, two is Stun Sport, which is less favorable, but we do have Paralyzed Heals, so we maybe get out of it. Uh, yep, so we got Poison Powder there, which is good. Um, nice. The, the worst is Sleep Powder, obviously, uh, because it's going to put us to sleep, and we don't have anything to heal that. So. Um, the worst also would be if you didn't get the Bulbasaur range, because Bulbasaur is also a range. Yes. Much more favorable, luckily, um, than Oddish, but still range. I almost forgot to yeah. repel there. So, uh, you, you saw earlier when I entered um rock tunnel that i use the repel um and it would have still kept going past uh, oddish girl a little bit um had i not died and saved and quit when you save and quit and reload the game your repel tiles are not saved um so i had to use a repel right away or else i would probably risk running into pokemon luckily i remembered within like three or four tiles um but i've done that a lot died there and reloaded and then be like all right let's continue moving and then all of a sudden just hit an encounter because i forgot to repel Um, this trainer is nothing. Uh, three rock types. We have Bubble Beam. Does not affect this whatsoever. And you can see how much faster things are moving in this red bar state. It's skipping mm -hmm. Pokemon Cries. It's skipping level up jingles. Um, it's making it yeah. so I can act that much faster. Yeah. To going I, for. One of the best fights of a task is that hiker fight. Because you don't have any Bubble Beams. And so you defeat all the Geodudes and the Graveler by intentionally using Thunderbolt and then making them self-destruct and Gen 1 miss the self-destruct. So they all kill themselves and don't kill you. And it works out super fast because in Gen 1, the self-destruct uh, doesn't make their health drop slowly. It just instantly disappears. Yes. Which... Mm, didn't want that. I was hopeful to not get attack by this Pidgey, but we got quick attack by the Pidgey. So, I'm going to have to heal for safety. Uh, that is purely because we have one more encounter before we get make our way over to uh, Celadon. Uh, well, not one more encounter, one more trainer, rather. Um, and that trainer has a Growlithe and a Vulpix. Um, that Vulpix has a percentage, that has a chance to quick attack us. We would die if it, it happened. So, uh, I'm not going to risk it. Uh, I wanted to keep Red Bar all the way through our rival fight, but there is a chance we get quick attacked again, and then get slapped back into red bars. We'll see. Um, but it's Gotta definitely... A gambler. A gambler. 
Now, with my my history running this game, I've I've seen Quick Attack from uh, the Vulpix less than ten times, I bet, in my sorted history running this game. But I know for a fact if I had tried to risk it, I would have gone. So just it just feels right. You know, you have you have hard statistic. I mean, uh, Kevin will attest to this as somebody who who runs runs a task. There's hard statistics, but there is also just like personal, <laughs> um, like. Uh, uh, what's what's the word for it? Uh, superstition. Uh, like whenever you want something to happen, it won't happen. It's just I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it is. Growlithe also a range there? I think it is a very very favorable range. Like, yeah. In the nineties, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's your like main point of like possible damage on that that's fight. Like... There we go. Oh yeah, there. I usually use an audio cue there, but I forgot to listen. <laughs> I like to count bike pedals. What we, what Conception's doing here is there's an elixir and a full restore or elixir and nugget. There's an elixir and a nugget hidden in this underground, and you really want to get those because one, the nugget lets you buy a ton more items, and the elixir the elixirs are super rare throughout the game. You can't buy them, and they're only in a few very specific locations. So speedrunners memorize the location of those two underground items. So that they can go faster and not have to take centers using the elixir instead and also get more x items which they can use to do more battles faster precisely we're gonna i picked up an ether earlier and we are gonna pick up four um elixirs count total through uh, but yeah now this is like our uh this is our last shopping trip of the run believe it or not but it's also like a very extended we buy a lot of stuff here. We bought, uh, so far we bought a TM, uh, which TM07, which is real. Um, we also bought super repels, super potions, and revives. Uh, in a in a standard like PB attempt, I wouldn't buy revives at all. Um, this is purely a marathon race uh, protection method. So I, if I do die, I have revives and can protect myself. Um, but I buy revives there as well. I uh, then bought a Poke Doll, which we'll go into what we do with that in a little bit here. Um, I then go to that vending machine, get a soda pop, talk to this girl, give it to her, and she gives a slide. Go back to the get a fresh water, which we'll give to a guard later on, so we can pass by. Then last bit of shopping here is our X items. Very important. By X accuracies, X special, X speed. That is our shopping. Got any donation reads for us here while we get to the fly HM? Uh, not at the moment, but I will remind everybody uh, that we, you know, this event is to raise money for charity for Stack Up, who uh, do support veteran mental health through gaming. So you can do command charity and chat to find out all about that. And uh, any and all donations are very much appreciated, as obviously it's going towards a, a great cause. Uh, so yeah, thanks and keep enjoying the run. Oh, Conception, I, I don't know if you're aware, but you can... Uh bike to the fly house and it's uh, slightly faster it is faster okay i thought it was but uh somebody had told me in my chat a little not it was a few months ago at this point here but um uh that it was slightly slower if you don't perfect the inputs so i just yeah yeah it's it's like 10 frames faster so um it can be slower if you don't perfect the inputs but you've got to miss by a pretty wide margin uh, okay gotcha that's good to know. I will do that in, going forward in runs in the future. I don't recall if I used uh, Super Repel there. I think I did. I'm going to check just to be safe. Did I use one? I did. Okay. Thought so. Yeah, I couldn't remember. You know, sometimes, especially I've been running this game for a bit now, um, and, you know, sometimes things feel automatic, so you never know. Like, I, I don't have a memory of doing that, but, you know, it's kind of like riding a bike. You just do it sometimes. <laughs> Had to check. Uh, because we are now in Lavender Tower. Uh, one, we have a rival fight here, but this rival fight is pretty uneventful, especially since... Um, uh, the thing of note... Oh, cool, we did get a quick attack. Uh, so we'll have a little bit of red bar. Um, 
Well, one thing of note here is if you've played this game before, you might remember that if you try to go in this tower and you don't have an item called the self scope, uh, you will encounter Pokemon that are just labeled as ghost and then they will chase you away and then you have to leave the tower. Um, we have a, not a workaround, what's a sequence break, I guess is, is what I would put it, um, where we do a few things here. Uh, one, we super repel, so we will not encounter any of those ghost encounters. Um, but two, when we get to the final ghost, which is meant to be the ghost of the Marowak, um, we will use the item called Pokedoll, which enables you to run away from any encounter uh, without fail. Um, now this, you might you might be thinking, is that a glitch, right? You know, this is the any percent glitches category, and it is not. Um, not too long, probably like, well, actually, it's probably like half a year ago now at this point, I don't remember. Yellow source code was leaked, um, in which on the yellow source code, it was mentioned that the her design that this was an option to be able to evade the whole game um, and just go through it. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Kevin, you might know a bit more information about that, but it is it is the, uh, a design uh, a design portion of the, you know, that you're able to be able to kind of circumvent the game corner and not have to get this. Yeah, um, might not have been like intended per se. There's uh, There was like a leak a while back of some internal documentation where they had like noted it as a bug but they couldn't fix it but the uh the point is that like we don't treat it as a glitch because there, there's no way for us to know what's a glitch well, the definition of glitch is so arbitrary we just like cut it off as no you're allowed to skip the, the game part we we had to make a decision one way or the other the way that's faster is to use the polka doll and it it appears for all intents to not be like breaking anything else. Like you can't go get a level 100 Mew because you use the polka doll in, in Lavender Tower like some other glitches. So exactly. it's not very serious. How I how I kind of choose to think about it is that, you know, I'm using the polka doll to run from a Pokemon. That is how the item is designed. Therefore, I don't think it's a glitch because I'm using the item as it's intended to be used the over overworld sense. So that's kind of how I choose to look at it. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not game breaking. I'm not going out of bounds. I'm not, you know, performing specific sets of inputs to corrupt save files or anything. Like that. <laughs> you know, I, I'm yeah, using we, the item as it's designed. Create, uh, yeah, we did create that classic category to match the Japanese runners because there, there's a whole separate community of people who run the game in the Japanese language, and they generally, uh, you, they don't allow instant text or the polka dog glitch and they also don't allow the sort of like save and quit manipulations so they're doing older tricks to get good nidorans we called that category classic the game is certainly a classic <laughs> uh, whether or not the category is called it that's definitely um oops I went an extra tile, a couple extra tiles there for no reason. Uh, no, another fat thumb on my uh, on my D-pad there. Let's act anything. Um, okay, so here's that uh, ghost of the Marowak that we kind of discussed earlier. We're gonna do some item swapping here, then use the Poke Doll so we can. Um, and you probably noticed that as well. So I right right after I got the HM for fly. Um, I did an extended menu where I not only taught some moves, uh, you know, I taught Rock Slide to my Nidoking and I taught Fly to my uh, Spearow, but in addition to that, I also swapped items up and down in my menu, and that is just purely for ease of access. Um, the, the items that I'm going to use most commonly, I want higher up my list, because, you know, after after any fight, um, it will reset my position in the bag. So, like, even if I was, like, halfway down the bag and then I get into a fight, it's going to start at the top of the bag. That's exactly why, for example, we move bike up to the front uh, because this game does not have the select button function, so I can't just press select in order to hop onto my bike like it, they start doing in Gen 2. I, every time I want to go on my bike, I have to go into my bag to use it. So um, that's why we, we just move our most used items up as far as we can so we don't have to continue roll into our bag. It's item in. Oh, yeah. Um, now we get to we get to talk about X accuracy. Want to give a little bit info, uh, a little bit information as to what we use X accuracies for? In the yeah, I, I think I mentioned it br very briefly earlier, but the X accuracy in Gen One it doesn't just like give you an additional stage of accuracy. 
or evasion, it it doesn't do that. It removes the accuracy check from ever happening. So if you have a move like Horn Drill that's 30% accurate, it now becomes 100% accurate, and that's even it even avoids the Gen One Miss scenario. So it, it's be, because like that's a, doing a check on the accuracy. Still, with with 100% accurate moves, it's like it doesn't even do the check. So we always always hit Horn Drill in every move after we use X accuracy. So you can see how we're going to kind of exploit this. If you're not familiar with Horn Drill, it is a one. It will kill any Pokemon no matter what, as long. As so. Uh that you can understand what, how we might exploit this a little bit going forward in the run. Um, it's a very useful mechanic to combine X accuracy. Um, and why we need lots of elixirs and ether because we need to constantly be restoring the very small amount of PP that we have with uh, Horn Drill. Yep, exactly. It's only It only has five, uh, five uses before you have to heal or use an elixir or ether to uh, power point something. Um, so yeah, that's that's a, a very pretty much almost the exclusive reason as to why we elixir often. There are a few times we need to heal other moves as well, coincidentally, but it's mostly to deal with our lack of horn at a given moment. Deaf mute, you can uh, you can get glitches at like the first minute of the game in so many different ways that yeah, you, I mean you can get glitched mons in that grass, in yellow, in red, whatever you want to do. These games are completely broken. Yep. That is for sure the um, So we have completed our Lavender Tower sequence there. Um, we are actually going into Celadon Center, Celadon City's Pokemon Center to heal here, not because we need to. Um, one, it does replenish the couple horn drills that we did use, sure, but our health was really great. We didn't need to. But it's mainly to set up another dig base, similar to what we did in Ceru because we're going to use this as like a point origin for a lot of different Here's the guard that I mentioned we are going to give water to, and that is just so we can pass it on into Saffron. We're going to go into Sylph Co. Now that that is open. Take care of Team Rocket. Uh, Silphco is another interesting area, another area that you might remember as a kid might have taken a while. There's a lot of exploration to it, a lot of trainers you can fight, a lot of items that can be picked up uh, that we just don't really do any of that. Uh, aside from Giovanni and our rival, we only fight one other trainer here. Uh, two other trainers, I'm sorry, two other trainers. Um, but there are quite a number of other trainers that we can fight here. Skip by all of that. Um, this one, it has just an Arbok. A um, couple ways you could deal with that here. You could use an X Accuracy and a Horn Drill, which is an attack. I'm going to opt to save that X Accuracy just in case. Um, and also in hopes of getting damaged a little bit like I just did. Uh, the, however, the risk in using Thrash is that it could take three turns. Arbok does have a move called Glare that will paralyze you. Uh, we didn't see it here, but I could have been paralyzed. But that, that would have been fine anyway. I have a paralyzed heal. Did get the three turn though, so a little bit unlucky, but not a big deal. Uh, we hop on that pad, hop back in order to get the card key, which is the item we need most to navigate uh, through Elf Co. Here, um, and then we are going to fight our rival. Um, a little bit of interesting movement coming up here, so I'll explain that. Um, similar to other uh, NPCs that we fought, or similar to our rival before, I'm actually going to intentionally walk a tile higher here, so that our rival hits us kind of directly in the face here, and then when the fight is over, uh, he's going to walk directly to the pad. If I had walked directly left after I got off the pad, he'd have to walk around me to get to it, which is very slow. So, uh, it is faster for us to go up one tile here. And now we have this rival fight, which... Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about Silph Red Bar, I'm not going to do it, but if you want to talk a little bit about it, you can. Yeah, there's a strategy here because you're pretty consistently around this HP when you get out of... Uh, or when you get into Silph here. There's a strategy you can do where you get into Red Bar and try to carry it through 
to the uh, Koga fight. Koga fight being where you intentionally manipulate self-destruct off of the Weezing, and then you have perfect red bar for the rest of the game for Koga. But until then, we're, you're not in red bar unless you do a setup in a specific way. I think it's on Gyarados. And then you get uh, self, we call it self red bar because you get it from self instead of start, starting from Koga. Yep. So what we would have done there is I would have done some intentional setup on the, starting even on the Pidge, uh, the Pidget, uh, where I would use some X items, kind of depending on what moves that I see the Pidget do. Um, you know, if we got damaged a lot, I'd do some different moves that's supposed to not getting damaged at all, for example. Um, and then the hopes are when we get to the Gyarados, we would intentionally take a Hydro Pump hit, which is going to bring our health down low, but not low enough to kill us unless we get crit, obviously. Um, and then if we're able to carry Red Bar all the way through properly, it would probably save about, I think it's like 30 seconds, roughly, um, yeah. over not getting it at all. Um, oh, yeah. At least. Yeah, at least. Yeah. So um, I'm not I'm opting not to take it because I don't want to die. <laughs> um, Plus, I didn't get a great setup for it anyway, because I'd gotten damaged by the Arbok, and I'd gotten crit on by the Pidget, so my health was low as it was. Um, so it, wasn't, it wouldn't have been particularly good setup. I could have made it work if I had wanted. Yeah. The routing through the mid-game here is really complex and interesting, because there's a lot of competing factors for what you should be doing when. Um, you want to get to Koga quickly and get through Koga, because once you beat Koga, you get a speed badge boost. But if you do Koga too quickly, then you get that really good red bar too early and you level out of it by the time you get to the Elite Four. And likewise, if you do Sylph early, it helps you get a lot of extra experience quickly that makes the Koga Gym easier. And it gets you the Earthquake TM and a Rare Candy up on the, one of the floors. Are, are we doing that in this route or did we go for the Arbok and get the uh, early... Or, or to get this right, did we get late EQ? We get late EQ. So we're gonna we we okay. went Arbok, got the uh, card key. After we defeat Giovanni, we're gonna pop over the tenth floor and get that rare key. Just quick. Yeah, Def Mute in Gen One there are something called DVs. It's the equivalent of IVs, and uh, so like one DV is roughly worth two IVs. So we have a Nitto. Uh, I can't even think. We have a Nitto with. 15, 15, 14, 15, so the equivalent of 30 attack, 30 defense, 28 speed, and 30 special attack and special defense IVs. Uh, there's just not great equivalence with the EVs, though. So in, in Gen 1, you have this thing called stat experience, and the easiest way to explain the, the equivalence between stat experience and EVs is that there's no limit to how much you can get in an individual stat XP. You can get, you can max out the stat XP for all the stats. So you you can really like bump up your stats a lot more than you can in the later gens in Gen One. Yeah, um, you saying you talking about stats in Gen One also reminded me that starting in Gen Two, um, uh, spe uh, we have a stat for special attack and special defense. In Gen 1, it is actually lumped into one entire stat just called Special, um, which which makes things in this game a little bit different than other gens. Uh, for example, kind of talk uh, going back to when I was talking about Kadabra, Kadabra has a very high Special, um, which uh, will make it so that both his Special Attack and Special Defense in later gens would be high. However, it's lumped into one stat here, so we would want to opt to use a physical move instead of a Special move, which is why anytime we encounter a uh, Kadabra Alakazam who has special high special defense because of uh, special being lumped into that, uh, we will always use a physical move like Earthquake or Thrash over using a special move, Blizzard for example. Yeah. Very, yeah, it's very, very, they really, uh, they develop things out past this. Yeah, this is definitely kind of like a stepping stone. Mm-hmm. And getting that blizzard is also another intricate part of the routing with this section of the run because you want to make sure you get blizzard before you do the Erica gym so that you have a good ice move for Erica. So Snorlax here. I wish I could say we do anything cool with Snorlax, but we don't. We just. 
Uh, but we did use the opportunity since we had to scroll to go down to the Poke Flute to wake okay, to some items in our menu, um, as well as use a repel, though my controller is acting a little strange right now. Oh, I, my controller actually just. I have to fight this optional. Sometimes that happens with my controller. Oops. Uh, don't worry about the aspect ratio. Open ones. So typically what you do is you hold B on this section so that you can't like automatically get pulled down cycling road. Yeah. But that could be really difficult to do if your controller isn't acting normally. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'll, I'll go into that because I do something very weird uh, with my controller. So I, what I'm playing this game on, I'm using a real red cartridge. And I'm playing on the GameCube uh, with the Game Boy Player attachment. So that's a common way to play it. So you're playing it on real hardware, obviously. Um, however, one thing that I do is, there we go, now I got it. Um, I also have an, a controller adapter so that I have a GameCube to PlayStation controller adapter. So I'm using a PS2 controller to play this at the moment. Um, a lot of Pokemon runners, instead of doing something like that, will use a Game Boy Advance SP as a controller. Um, I personally don't like using it because it's a little small for my hands. Um, so I like having a little bit more space. Um, but occasionally, like what just happened, um, the, my controller adapter will just go on the fritz for a second, and then my controller, my controls will kind of swap, you know, and you know, up is down a little bit. It's a little, it happens so infrequently that I never really think about it, but it can uh, throw a wrench into things occasionally, like it did. But uh, whatever, we hit it. We hit another trainer. Uh, that one's a pretty easy one to kill, um, so it's not like it causes a lot of grief. Just slow. So we still got every oops, I forgot to use bike. Uh, we still got everything we needed. So that was good. No harm, no foul. Oh yeah, I do want to get on the bike there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, now before we head over to Koga, we are going to head into the Safari Zone. Um, not to catch any Pokemon, unfortunately, but there is a couple of key items that we need to get here uh, to progress the story, as well as uh, you know get uh, strength here as well, uh, which is obviously very important. But, uh, weirdly enough, we're going to pay entry to go into the Safari Zone to then use a Repel and not encounter any Um, this is one of my favorite parts of the run because it's just, like, it's just chill. You know, we're just riding a bike through a park, basically. Um, there's not a lot of thought to it. There's not a lot of dangers. You know, there's not trainers, uh, everywhere you have to make sure to avoid or anything like that. It's just a nice bike ride through the park. Yeah, and importantly, we, we cut the bushes on the way through the safari to get to the safari zone, which is only faster in red because there's different menu lag between Gen 1 Pokemon Red and Gen 1 Pokemon Yellow. In Yellow, it is not faster to cut the bushes, and it's faster to actually bike all the way around to get into the safari zone. Yep, that is correct. Yeah, it's just barely faster. Uh, so this is one item we grab, which is the teeth. Uh, we have to give those to Gordon later on. The movement is always awkward here, uh, but we got there. And then we talked to this person to get to the end um, of our zone that we receive. Uh, this is actually the Surf HM, not the Strength. Um, but uh, we will get Strength here. Weirdly enough, we walk outside and we can dig out of the park. Don't have an exclamation for that for you. And then we're going to take our Bureau back over to Fuchsia. Gonna menu quick here. Take our bike and head directly in. Oh, I hear that dog in the background. <laughs> yeah, and there was another one outside that he was uh, scared of for a minute, even though he's inside. <laughs> but I think he's okay for now. Yeah, do dogs really do be like that. They'll just bark at anything. Yeah. Um, this trainer is uh, of absolute no consequence. We have Earthquake now. We just straight up Earthquake everybody. Um, the next trainer has a little bit of consequence, especially because my health is a tiny bit dangerous. Um, it's not super risky, but I could die um, coming up. Um, it's risky, just risky enough, I would say. Um, so the next trainer has, uh, that past this one that we're fighting currently, has a Drowsy and a Hypno. Uh, Drowsy will go down in one shot. Uh, the Hypno has a tiny chance to go down in one shot if we crit it, um, which would be great. 
Um, otherwise, we're going to have to take one hit from the Hypno before we can defeat it. Um, if the Hypno chooses to use Fusion, that's where things will get dangerous for us. We'll probably die. Um, but it could use any other move. Sable or Poison Gas or Headbutt. Um, however, I'm not saving or anything because we got those revives. So even if I do die, I'll just revive. Um, it's slow, but you know it's not super dangerous. Uh, when you have the revive set. Fun fact for the chat talk. While it is possible to trade a Gen 1 Pokemon to Gen 2 to create a shiny, because it's based on your base stats, which carry over the same way from Gen 1 to Gen 2, you can only do it for Pokemon that are like standing encounters like the Mewtwo, because any Pokemon you generate from a wild encounter, there's these weird quirks with the RNG that make certain stat combinations impossible. Ooh, and there's a def. Yep, that's all right. That's like, like I said, it could happen. Yeah, but with the impossible stat combinations, it's only possible to make shinies out of standing Pokemon. It's not possible to get a shiny in Gen 1 from a wild encounter and then trade that over to be a shiny. So like the legendaries or like the Voltorb and Electrode in the power plant, those will carry over and can be shinies. I just realized I shouldn't have used Spira there, but that's okay. Um, I should have used a any other Pokemon. Uh, and that will matter later on. I'm gonna have to figure out what I want to do. I there are a pretty good number of scary fights, Kawiki, uh, and you, you might be seeing that now because Con uh, Conception's having an interesting time here navigating the Koga Gym. But uh, we, we know a lot of the backup strats to get through it. Mm -hmm. You know, I know what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do. So there is. So the, I was having an internal struggle here. So I, so I, I died. So I swapped to a Pokemon. I should have swapped to any Pokemon that wasn't Spiro, and that is because we're going to use Spiro much later on for another Pokemon swap uh, in one of the. Um, I sh so uh, and it's important that it's Spiro specifically. Fortunately, so it was kind of unfortunate that that's the one I went. To. Um, but what I will do, I, there is an extra revive that is in. Giovanni's gym, so I'll pick that up, and then I'll revive Spirit. Mm -hmm. And just to avoid confusion, that death was intentional. This one was on purpose, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one is scripted. And uh, so what we do is, on that Weezing, um, take, uh, we hope to get we Elixir 1 to heal our, all of our moves. PP. And then we take an intentional death on self-destruct there, uh, because it's decently fast. Um, one but two we're gonna now use rare candies uh, we have three of them currently and we're gonna level up three times whenever you level up it obviously increases your base hp um however it also gives you that hp in return so i in theory revived myself uh while leveling myself up but uh, in addition to that i've also made my health very low which we get to now exploit the bar great Oh, just checking on Squirtle, see how Squirtle's. <laughs> um, now we fly back home. Uh, we can go to uh, Pallet Town. We are now Super Repel. Um, and then scroll a long ways down each surf to our Squirtle. And I hop on Squirtle. Our way south. Uh, now we're going. We're heading to Cinnabar. You might have remembered as a childhood crossing this vast ocean filled with Pokemon trainers. Uh, and to kind of break the illusion for you, if you surf down there and go left one tile, go straight down. You're just gonna hit Cinnabar. Like you don't have to go that far out of your way. Here it is. Voila. Um, and here we are in the Pokemon. No trainers here to fight, but we have to grab a couple of items. Uh, one, we have to grab the secret key, which allows us to get into Blaine's gem later on. Um, but two, we're also going to grab a rare candy um, and a TM uh, for Blizzard.
This is all just clever navigation, walking around all the, the possible trainers we could hit. And we actually are very, very precise with our movement here because we're going to get to this Pokeball, which is the Blizzard TM. And we actually exactly have, I think it's one more step before our uh, our Repel Tile would wear off. Um, yeah, a couple. Um, you have to make, like I think, two, two. mistakes. But I, I, uh, I discovered that with Exarian a couple of years ago. Exarian was testing the Blizzard strategy with Worcester. I think Worcester came back just to look at Blizzard and then stop playing Gen 1 again or something. But then out of that, uh, I was I was also looking at stuff with Tass and figured out, oh, you can use... Well, I wouldn't have been looking at it for Tass, but yeah, I figured out you can you can just use the Repel in that bottom corner of the Pallet Town. And it lasts exactly to the Blizzard. Yep. Exactly. Um, so that obviously saves us the text box that could pop up that says, hey, your, your Repel has expired. Uh, so we don't have to encounter that. In addition to that, we also have to menu anyway to teach a few moves. Um, we teach strength to Squirtle, and we also teach the Blizzard that we just picked up. Um, and then, you know, we have to repel anyway, so we might as well. And that's uh, a little intricacy of Gen 1 as well, that you can use repels while you have one active. Whereas in other gens, I think you have to like, wait it out for it to expire, and then it'll ask you if you want to reuse one. Now, so now we are going to fight Erica. You might still be wondering, hey, we are an hour and a half roughly into the run. We have four badges. Now, we still have to get four more, and we still have to fight the Elite Four. How am I going to do this in half an hour? But you will see now that we are kind of on a boss rush of... Boss um, <laughs> rush is exactly it. Yeah, so what we do... we In the middle parts of this run, we basically get all of the story beats out of the way that we have to. Because once you get past Vermilion, it really opens up as to what your options are. Um, so what we choose to do is get all of the key story beats that we have to do out of the way up front. Then we will just do all of the gems back to back, more or less. So now we are here in Erica's gym. We have to fight that beauty. It's the one unavoidable trainer in her gym. Now we can fight Erica. Um, and then we're going to take Erica out. Then we're going to hop over to Blaine on Cinnabar Island. Then we're going to hop back over to... Uh, Saffron and take out uh, Sabrina and then we're going to hop to Viridian and take out Giovanni. So it moves rather quickly. But as you can see our health is really low. We got the health uh, red bar mechanic and we are going to carry red bar all the way through halfway through the Elite Four roughly. If things go to plan. That's Erica down. I do love that Gen 1 Tangle of Sprite, mm -hmm. in, uh, especially in red. In yellow, it's a little bit weird. <laughs> ah, there we go, jeez. Um, interesting note, so you might have noticed the past few gems as well. Um, there, uh, you know, after every gem, you will receive a TM from... Um, Koga and now Erica have both said uh, when they are completed, you don't have room for this, which is actually faster. So we are very careful with our um, inventory management to the point that we keep our bag full um, so that we don't have to receive their TMs. A lot more text to do. Uh, but now we're here in the Cinnabar gym where we have to repeatedly answer quiz questions or fight trainers. Obviously, it is faster to answer quiz questions or just going to go through the tedious part of answering all these questions correctly. Um, fun thing to note, it's going to look like I'm pressing yes for every answer. However, that's not the case. Um, if you press B instead of A when you get to the yes or no text box, you will uh, pre you will select no instead. Of uh, so it saves you from having to scroll down and press A. It's faster just Right. If you're wondering, that answers that I'm doing are yeses first, then it's three noes, no, 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 and then yes, and then... Yeah, A, B, 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 A, B. <laughs> yep, if you're doing the and, button. Uh, and, what was I saying? Oh, in red, that's this is one of the very few points where something is slower in red than in yellow, because every one of the 
questions in Blaine's gym in red re-explains how the quiz works, and in yellow they remove that, so it only explains how the quiz works on the first question. Yep. So yeah, it's one of the one of the parts where you can pick up time in yellow over the red route. I also I also hold to this day that the first quiz question is contentious. Uh, the first question asks, "Does Caterpie evolve into Butterfree?" The answer is yes, but I mean oh, not directly. <laughs> you know? There's a middle step there. There's the there, you know Metapod. But I remember getting that question wrong as a kid and thinking I got gypped. Okay, cool. Got the fast option here. So, um, Blaine is entirely free. Nothing can go wrong as long as I press everything correctly. Um, the one thing that there is variance is, is if Blaine chooses to use the super potion first, uh, regardless of what happens, because as you can see, uh, we set up with, um, X accuracy, so we didn't attack Growlithe, so he used the super potion for literally no reason. Um, but it's faster for him to do so. The other option is that Growlithe can use ability, uh, which, if he uses agility, he'll get to do another move again because he'll be faster than us at that point. Uh, but because he used Super Potion, the second turn, we were faster. It actually saves us, like I think it's like three seconds. Come on. Uh, getting uh, Super Potion over. So uh, now that's that's uh, our sixth gym badge completed. And now we're going to go to Saffron. So you might be wondering, a little strange. Um, we dig out, and then we're actually going to bike to the Saffron Gym, as opposed to flying to Saffron and biking to it. And that is entirely based on the Pokemon Center's position in Saffron. It's all the way at the bottom of the map. The gym is all the way at the top. So it's actually faster to bike over uh, to Saffron than it is to fly there, um, as it's so far away from the gym. And Hunter, uh, Conception is playing the game on the Game Boy Player, the Game Boy Player being an attachment for the GameCube, it sits on the bottom of the GameCube, and it contains the entire contents of a Game Boy Advance, so it is just like playing the game on an original Game Boy Advance. It has the same exact behavior, and that allows us to write uh, manipulations, like the Encounter and Nidoran manipulation, that work exactly like the original console was designed, and yet still play it on a system of the GameCube that can be captured by a, uh, cap a, mo a modern capturing card. Even the, the GameCube can actually output HDMI with uh, devices like the uh, Eon GCHD Mark II or the Insurrection Carby. I use the Carby, uh, yep. Yeah. Do you use the native Game Boy Player disc or you use GBI? I'm using the native disc. So uh, all, all the old stuff. Right, right. I think I remember asking about this because of one of your... Um, I was very fine one of your runs. Yep, yep. So I use Game Boy Player and I use the native G Game Boy Player disc, which is a valid question uh, for Kevin to ask because the Game Boy Player disc is hard to find and expensive. Um, and sucks and compared sucks. to GBI. Yeah, it definitely sucks. <laughs> it definitely sucks in comparison to GBI. Um, but that's the, that's what I have, so that's what I use. Yeah, it, it works great. It, it's, it's, it's really just a comparison with how, how great GBI has uh, made the Game Boy Player like so identical to the original console. Exactly. So that is Sabrina taken out. One fun thing that I always like to bring up with Sabrina. So, um, not a dangerous fight at all, and but it's specifically uh, related to how precise the routing is. So we defeat the Kadabra, I believe, is first, and then the Mr. Mime. We level up after the Mr. Mime. That level up that occurs makes our speed exactly one point higher than her Alakazam. Just one point. So that just uh, makes, if the Alakazam was faster, obviously it would just completely destroy us. Um, so that just speaks to how precise the routing is. Uh, just oh, yeah. always, always an interesting thing to bring up. All right. Yeah, so. you can only dig out of specific buildings and uh, they only patch certain of those buildings in yellow. So there's there's like some glitched ones in red, and there's fewer glitched ones in yellow, and so on and so forth. My timer again? I just noticed that. Yeah, your timer is um, starting from scratch. Oh, interesting. I wonder if my splits have messed with it. Because I also have my uh, my regular splits up. I wonder if that's what's... 
Sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't say anything because I, I thought that you had gotten the ping from... Uh, from oh yeah, I'm not looking at Discord whatsoever. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm really sorry if my timer has been messed up. I will report the final time at the end. I did not know this whole time. Apologies about that. I did some testing to make sure, you know, because to set up my hotkeys so that I could still use my splits as well as the timer. Um, and I thought I had it set up correct. I did not. Apologies. It, it was working for a long time. It just stopped working like a couple minutes ago. Weird. Very weird. Um, so we are we are in Giovanni's gym. Um, we actually just dealt with easily the hardest uh, member of the gym, and it's not Giovanni. It's that uh, that karate uh, no black belt is what it's called. Couldn't think. Um, the reason why is we we I saved before it because if we had gotten karate chopped, we would have died most likely, unless we didn't get a crit. But karate chop is a high crit chance. Um, the reason why, I, you know, it might, it might have been fine because, you know, you could just easily say, you know, I never revive, so if you die, so what? But if I revive, it's going to take me out of red bar, and I really want to keep red bar as long as I can. To the point that if even if I had died there, it's faster for me to reset and try again than to heal and have you know, not have red bar. Uh, it's still faster. I think I could reset twice even and still be faster. Um, so it's definitely worth, you know, just resetting until you get the optimal fight. But luckily we got it on the first turn. Um, and then Giovanni is just absolutely free. Yep, unlike in yellow, where it's like, oh no! Yep. <laughs> so many crit chances. Uh, we just take everything out with Earthquake until his ride on, which we actually take out with Blizz. Hey, if you want, I could actually throw up uh, a timer from this end, if you want to just tell me, like, around what um, minute and second you're at. Sure, yeah. Um, we are at, we're about to be at 140.45. Uh, by the time you get it in there. Okay. Uh, let me know when I should start it there. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So it's like it's like a second or two off, but that's fine. Um, no worries. Uh, yes. So now we we have all eight of our badges. Remember, at the one thirty mark, we had four. So uh, yeah. in ten. Well, minutes, you guys thought we were getting fast to six. We just got another two more. Now we're at eight. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I like I'd mentioned before, this is my solution to accidentally using uh, Spiro when I shouldn't have. I pick up an extra revive there, um, so that I can revive Spiro back to life. And now, like, oh there. Oh, so now we're heading over the Victory Road. Um, remember this little patch of grass is where we started our journey, more or less. No, throw back. Um, yes. Not to be impeded, unfortunately, by our rival yet again. Um, so we get to fight our rival again. Um, this fight is interesting in a few ways. So, there's a lot of a little variances to the route. For example, I could have grabbed a PP up earlier in, the, in their game, and that would have increased my, um, my PP from 5 to 6 on Horn Drill, which would make this fight free. Um, I did not do that, uh, just because it's a little bit out of the way. Um, so what I elect to do instead... Um, is I will still use an X accuracy, though I'm not going to be using any horn drills here. Um, and I'm going to do some unique situations here. We'll use an X accuracy and an X special. Um, that is just to kind of take everything out. Um, Gyarados here is fine. We just Thunderbolt it. Um, the next Pokemon that our rival is going to use is Growlithe, which we can actually set up again on if we need to, which I'm going to use the second X special here. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why we know we can set up, it has to do with the AI of the uh, trainer. So if you want to talk a little bit about that, uh, Kevin. For sure. Yeah, because I, I think of the poison typing on the King, the Pokemon that use a good AI, basically mostly your rival and the gym leaders in the E4, uh, those trainers will have smart AI instead of just random AI. And they try to use moves that are super effective against your Pokemon. The problem is that they only know super effectiveness by typing. They don't know whether a move does damage or if, like, they only have one move that does a stat change. Maybe use that once and do something else afterward. No. So if if a Pokemon does a move like agility that raises its speed, it will think it's super effective against you if it has a type advantage because agility is a psychic move and it will repeatedly use agility and it can't do anything else against you 
So, uh, yeah, our, obviously our rival has that quote-unquote smart AI, so I knew for a fact that that Growlithe had agility, and I knew it would spam agility, so I can take my time to set up if I needed to use an X item or whatever the case. Um, so I chose to use a second X special there. Mm -hmm. I do this all the time! I want to use Surf here, not Strength. <laughs> Uh, just fat thumb the input. Wow. Um, so, but the reason why, I, so an X accuracy wasn't necessary for me to do there. The reason why I chose to do that is because the only dangerous Pokemon in that fight is um, if I had had six PP for my horn drills, I would have just used that X accuracy and horn drilled to death. It, would have, it wouldn't have never stood. I don't have six PP. So what I choose to do there is I will use an X accuracy, which guarantees that my blizzard is going to hit. So I know it won't miss. Um, and then the blizzard is a favorable range on on uh, on the Venusaur, but it still has a chance to not kill it. Um, so I, basically, I kind of use and pray there. If I had died, obviously I had the revive. But um, yeah, so I kind of use and pray there. It, and it's faster uh, in the long run. It is just more risky. Um, but I choose to because it is so favorable that I you know I've probably died a handful of times to that Venusaur. Uh, I just kind of roll the dice there. Especially really with the revives. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, tell me again one more time uh, what the timer should be at. Um, so right now it's at 145.05. So if you want, if we are resetting it from the set it for like 145.20. Uh, Perfect. Okay, I'm ready for it. All right. Go. All right, there we go. All right, so we are at um, Victory Road here, which, um, if done correctly, uh, we will not be fighting anything uh, in Victory Road. Uh, we are just going to solve these boulder puzzles. Um, I say if done correctly because you can, with imprecise movement, run into trainers by accident. I'm going to attempt to not do that. Um, but it is also precise in movement to the fact that if you move uh, properly, uh, you can actually save a menu by not by uh, super repelling uh, when you're meant to use a bike menu anyway. If you move improperly just by a few tiles even, you're going to have to use your repel early um, and not get to the bike menu. I'm, I'm being a little bit slow and cautious with my movement so I can avoid having <laughs> to do a menu which would cost me like for three seconds. Yeah. yeah, but you also can't be too slow and cautious. Because if you stop and start, I believe it causes turn frames, which burn extra um, repel checks. Exactly. Yep. So you can't. Yeah, you can't be. Yeah, you, you can be cautious, but not too cautious. Yeah, you have to find that middle ground. It burned a couple extra. It's not the end of the world if you burn a couple extra. You just don't want to be like. 10 steps away from the, the ladder and yeah. or 20 or 30. Yeah. Ooh, I was one tile away, but I knew I'd be safe if I did it. So. Um, nice. Pretty close. Pretty, yeah, pretty close. close. We take those. All right, and then this, this is the last ball. The uh, menu here is a really fun one in tap because you get the two menus in quick succession with all of the using of item down below which sets your cursor back to the top where you can use the bikes to fill really interesting menuing tech. Last boulder puzzle here, like I said, we are not fighting any out. We are. Um, so typically what we would do here is we would actually deposit two of our Pokemon. We would only keep our Nidoking, obviously, and our Flyer. I'm not going to deposit. I could deposit one, but it's not really worth the time just to deposit one. So I'm just going to keep it as is, keep our party. The reason why it's worth depositing in a PB attempt is because after you complete, the run ends after your Hall of Fame sequence. So it runs through every Pokemon in your party. So the less Pokemon you have, obviously, the faster that's going to go. Um, but because we have a revive and, and we need to swap, I'm uh, just not going to worry about it. I'll take the, you know, 15 seconds. Um, in, in case I have to revive if something goes terribly wrong. The alternative, obviously, would just be saving repeat. So that way... But, so we, uh, we also take advantage of the smart AI hero. Uh, I mentioned having to swap to hero specifically. 
and that is because uh, Spearow is a bird, and bird types are weak to ice. Um, when we swap to Spearow, it will cause Dugong to use Roar Beam. And the AI of uh, Dugong is also set up that whenever it uses a Roar Beam, no matter what, the next move it's going to use is Rest. Um, so what we do is we swap to Spearow so it dies to the Roar Beam. We know it's going to use Rest next. So we take that Rest opportunity in order to use our X accuracy. Um, and then we horn drill the rest of the Pokemon that lore. So that is kind of how we manipulate the Lorelei encounter. Uh, there is a strategy that we call uh, Yolo Lorelei, which is you just hope that you don't get a Roar Beam when you use Nidoking. King. Um, <laughs> it's I, I believe it's twenty five percent, if I remember uh, correctly. Um, uh, maybe twenty percent. Twenty percent. Um, so it is unfavorable, but because of the high level competition at the top, it's almost necessary. Um, at this point, um, because doing so... Oh, it's, it's certainly not necessary, but it can be necessary in in certain situations where you're really, like, a little bit, just, like, a little bit slower than the, your goal time going into the E4. Right. Um, so you, you might have... If you read off my face here, I panicked for a slight second. Um, there is only one thing that could have killed me here, uh, despite my health being low, because I we have to set up on the Onyx. So, but there's one exact move in sequence that could kill me, which is one, Bruno chooses uh, to have Onyx use Slam. Slam is not a 100% move, so Slam has to pass an accuracy check to hit anyway. Then, uh, and it's one in five to pick Slam to begin with, then it has to pack the, pass the ac accuracy check. Passes the accuracy check. If it crits, that kills me. 1.9% chance uh, at any point to uh, die from a Slam crit uh, when your health is at. So I panicked a little bit when I saw that slam hit because I was like, oh man, I might die, um, but we we didn't have to deal. Yeah, just a reminder here for the E4, the horn drills are all hitting guaranteed because they're, the X accuracy uses we're doing remove the accuracy check from the game for the course of our Nidoking being out in battle. And because we're only using Nidoking, we don't have to worry about accuracy at all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so Agatha is an interesting fight to say the least um it's we, we the strategy that i've used now which is actually so i've healed a little bit and i actually will use a rare candy to hit 52. um it actually makes this significantly safer than what it used to be um but it's still a little bit interesting because you could get hypnosis like this which uh makes things in forward um it's not the oops passed it it's not the uh end of the world to get hypnosis here it's my where is it? Do I? There it is. There yeah, it is. but it's both paralyzed. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So I have a poke flute, so I can I can evade sleep. Um, so especially if you use a dream gear here, it's more or less fine. We have to use a X special to be able to uh, pass through Golbat coming up um, with uh, Blizzard. Pass. But once we pass that initial Gengar and we Blizzard through the Golbat, it's safe at this point. Um, the only thing that could happen that would make the goal bat weird is that since Blizzard is not a 100% accurate move, Blizzard can miss. And then it could use a move called Haze, which removes all status effects, uh, which would uh, cancel out the X special I used, uh, which and it also cancels out badge boost. So the last um, Gengar that I would fight would actually be faster than me, um, which I then would then use an X speed to counter, but um, I don't have to worry about that. Didn't have to counter. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Moody, Moody John. We do not save at all when doing normal attempts of this game, except for the saves that you have to do to do an encounter and uh, RNG manipulation for good Pokemon. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you can use the Poke Flute to wake up Snorlax. You can use the Pokemon Flute to wake up your own Pokemon in battle. It's great. Very useful on fights like Agatha. So we're going to Elixir. We're going to Super Potion. Uh, I'm going to also Potion. Um, and I'm actually going to do a slightly risky thing, but not really because I have a revive, which is not safe for life. Uh, worst comes to worst. Absolute worst comes to worst. I saved before. Um, and we're, we're doing okay on time. So... Uh, uh, the reason why you would want to save before Lance in a, an, an attempt that you don't want to die, basically, uh, is because we are going to set up on Gyarados here, and he's going to use Hydro Pump Gear. 
speed. If we are crit by the Hydro Pump, we're dead, even from full. Um, if it doesn't crit... Oh, see, there you go. We got crit. Um, so if it doesn't crit, however, we um, we will still have some health left as long as we heal above the 129 range. Um, so not not the end of the world here. Yep. We're going to revive. Because then we got all those extra revives. <laughs> yep, exactly. We're going to revive. We're going to... Super Potion. Um, hopefully, Garrus decides to kill us at some point. We could, pro we could probably swap, but it's smart AI. Does he just spam Leer? Am I actually just softlocked here? Oh, no. Um... Nope, there we go. Okay, we're not softlocked. <laughs> I, that would be confusing. I, well, I was thinking too because Leer is a normal type move, so I was, and I know he yeah, has that wouldn't beam. make yeah so any was, sense. Yeah, I was like, he has hyper beam. He could use that, right? Yeah, but no, we're okay. All right, so we're gonna attempt this again. Yeah, you, you didn't want to switch back because even if you had gotten um, Hydra Pump on the switch back, you needed to reuse an X item. So we would have to hit it twice. Uh, which is yeah. why I healed up again as well. But this is yeah. what you would look to get. Uh, hit, but not crit, yeah. and then now you're in red bar. That, that's basically what you uh, All this means at this point is I will definitely save before uh, our champion fight. Just to be safe. Yeah. And you wanted the Paris to die there because you didn't want to mess with your experience with the the routing at the end game here being very tightly aligned to make sure you don't level up in the middle of fights at the wrong point and lose your badge boost. Yeah, so that's Lance. Unconventional, but we got through it. So no more revives now at this point, unfortunately. So we're going to uh, take it a little, we're gonna take it safe and we're gonna save because I really don't wanna have to <laughs> redo multiple fights here. Um, yes. Yeah. We're going to Super Potion and save. All the safety. Yep. Marathon style. All right. So this is the last fight of the game. Now, time does not end after we defeat this, uh, defeat the champion slash our rival here. Um, we still have to, like I said, go through the Hall of Fame sequence, but it is coming up soon-ish. Grace. Um... This fight is interesting. So we do all of our setup on the on his Pidgeot, which is out front. Um, the Pidgeot could do a, a few different things, so we kind of have to adapt uh, based on what happens uh, if things get really dicey. Whirlwind is perfectly fine, actually ideal. Great. So we don't have to adapt to anything. This fight is now. <laughs> it's it's over. We just have to go through the motion. Uh, weirdly enough, this fight. For whatever reason, even though we have battle animations turned off, it re it brings them back. So uh, we still we have to go through all the battle animations that we didn't get to see throughout the run. But uh, nothing, barring me missing an input, nothing will uh, lose this fight for us now. The Pidgeot has the uh, a few things that can uh, get a little hairy. Uh, if it wing attacked repeatedly, I would have died. Um, if it had used a move called Sky Attack on the first turn, I would have had to adjust my strategy a little bit because um, I used X Special first, so I actually would have killed it af before using an X Accuracy like I did, and then I would use an X Accuracy. Um, but yeah, just just a little bit of adaptation we had to have. We got the ultimate safest route, which is Whirlwind twice. <laughs> At it, all of our fights. A defeat in mm -hmm. A. Yep. Good job, Conception. Thank you. Finishing I a Pokemon that. run in a marathon. It's always a an underestimate, too, which is even an even bigger challenge. Uh, Pokemon <laughs> is one of the most unpredictable uh, kind of, of runs that you can think of, especially any. Uh, setting an estimate is always difficult because you set it to be your worst possible time. But even there are things that could happen to make your worst possible time even worse than you could have ever imagined. Um, it, it, it is the there is a possibility, but luckily, you know, RNG went enough in our favor, and my mistakes were minimal enough that 
gonna finish underestimate uh and just sub two hours it looks like. so that's good cool um so yeah we just have to go through our hall of fame here so i'll take the time to do kind of our shout outs now because there's not uh but we will get ready on time um but yeah thank you so much for gsa for having me this is actually my first of three runs in this event so i really appreciate you guys featuring me so heavily um just wanted to shout out as well a couple organizations i'm a part of vinacio esports as well as eoq pocket full of quarters um so thank you guys for having me on board uh your team as well uh, i wanted to shout out kevin here for excellent commentary as always thank you so much thank you conception i appreciate watching your run and i hope you have a good time with the rest of your runs in the event yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, if you like Pokemon, I'm going to be running a Tower Two Fists run tomorrow. Um, and then if you like all their games entirely, I'm also running Grim Fandango. Uh, here comes time. time. <laughs> and you can see how much uh, dying and resetting we do with uh, that big discrepancy with the in-game time not tracking when we were doing those resets. Yeah, exactly. Um so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah, if you're interested in Pokemon speedrunning as well, uh, we have Discord set up for uh, multiple generations, depending on which generation you're running. Uh, if you visit our speedrun.com pages of the game that you're looking for, it will link directly to those Discord. We have resources abound. Everyone's willing to help you. Feel free to join those, and we will give you a hand with whatever we can. Um, oh, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, that's all I got. I appreciate you guys having me.